Welcome to the video on similarity transformations. The purpose of this video is to introduce you to the idea of similarity transformations and show you how you can use them in order to conclude or prove whether or not two figures are similar. So first of all, what is a similarity transformation? A similarity transformation is just any transformation that will produce an image that is the same shape as the original figure. Now, since reflections, translations, and rotations produce a figure which is congruent to the original, they would all have to say, have the same shape and therefore be similarity transformations. Dilations produces an image that is the same shape as the original, but not necessarily the same size, making it a similarity transformation as well. We can conclude that two figures are similar if and only if we can obtain one from the other by using a sequence of similarity transformations. Or in other words, can we identify a series of reflections, translations, rotations, and dilations that will map one figure onto the other? If the answer to that is yes, then we can conclude that the two figures are similar. If the answer to that is no, then the two figures would not be similar. So moving along to number one, they're giving us the image that's shown. They want us to identify a similarity transformation that will map figure A onto figure Y. And then it goes on to say if one does not exist, explain why or how come. Now in looking at these two figures, they're of two different sizes. So I know that a dilation is going to have to be into the, in the works somewhere um, in my sequence of, of transformations. I also notice that if I take a look at the point that they have in common, that point right there whose coordinates are 11, 1, I'm going to call him point P. I notice that in order to get one to dilate onto the other, I'm going to have to flip it across the line that passes through point P. In other words, the line whose equation is x equals 11. So I'm going to begin my sequence of similarity transformations by reflecting figure x across the line whose equation is x equals 11. And I'll do that by moving or mapping each vertex in the figure. So when reflected across the line whose equation is x equals 11, figure x will map onto that blue dotted figure that I drew up there. And now we've got to go ahead and we've got to see if we can dilate. So I need to see if there exists a dilation that will map that green vertex down onto that fella. If I consider point P to be my center of dilation, which I want it to be because I want it to stay exactly the same, and from point P I move up 2 into the left 1, and then I move up 2 to the left 1 again, I end up right on that vertex that I want to dilate. So that vertex does indeed dilate down onto the vertex in figure Y. And I'm going to do the same thing for each of these, considering point P to be my center of rotation, I'd have to go up 3 and to the left 3 and a half. Sorry, up 2 and a half and to the left 2 and a half. And that vertex does map right onto the vertex in figure Y that I want it to. And likewise, I'm going to consider that yellow vertex. I have to go up 1 and to the left 5. So to map to its image, I'd have to go up a half and to the left, two and a half. And each and every one of those does map onto its corresponding vertex and figure Y. So yes, these two figures are similar. Now I need to do what it says in the directions and identify the similarity transformations. So if I think about where I started, and I can either write this in paragraph form, I can talk about reflecting figure X across the line X equals 11, and then dilating it with a center of point P and a scale factor of a half. 
I don't like to write that much, so I'm going to use my mathematical notation. I started out by reflecting across the line whose equation is x equals 11. So I'm going to indicate that following by using my open symbol for following, or my open circle to mean the word following, following a reflection in the line x equals 11. And the transformation that I did following that was the dilation. And in order to identify a dilation, I need to identify the center, point P, and the scale factor, which was a half. So if I do a dilation centered at point P with a scale factor of 1 half, following a reflection in the line x equals 11 of figure x, the figure that that is mapped to or that is produced ends up being or equal to figure y. So again, I'm going to use that mathematical language and that mathematical notation, but if you'd like to write me a little sentence explaining exactly what you did, that's okay too. All right, down at the bottom of the page, they want us to do the same thing. The typo in there, I totally own. That's all me. Should say use. Use the definition of similarity in terms of transformations in order to determine whether or not two figures are similar. So in other words, can we use a sequence of similarity transformations to map one figure onto the other? I'm going to start in part letter A with that little triangle. And I notice immediately if I flip him over the y-axis, his image is going to be that red triangle. And then I'm going to dilate. I need to make him larger. And if I dilate him by a scale factor of 2 with a center at C, he'll map right onto that purple triangle, which is exactly what I wanted. So yes, these two are indeed similar to each other, but now I need to identify the transformations that I did. So I reflected across the y-axis first. So I'm going to say following a reflection across the y-axis. The dilation that I did had its center either at the origin or point C. Either or is correct because they're both the same point with a scale factor of 2. So a dilation with center at point C with a scale factor of 2 following a reflection in the y-axis of triangle ABC will map to produce the second triangle. And when I name the second triangle, I have to be a little bit careful. Point A mapped onto point D. So when I name the tr second triangle, I want to name vertex D first. Point B mapped onto point E. So E is the second vertex. And point C mapped onto itself, making C the third vertex. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same exact thing for part B. I'm going to see if I can somehow map the small triangle onto the large one using a sequence of similarity transformations. And if I can, I'm a winner. Now, there exists an infinite number of transformations that will map one onto the other. So you just need to find any sequence. It might be different than the sequence I find. And if you're thinking about it differently, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're wrong. What I would recommend that you do here is I would recommend picking a vertex, and it can be any vertex, but picking any vertex and mapping that onto um, uh, the corresponding vertex in the new image. So I'm going to start with point F, M, and I'm going to find a transformation that will map point M onto point R. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to translate three units to the left and three units down. So following a transformation of negative three units in the x direction, or three units left, and three units down, or negative three units in the y direction. So that'll map point M onto point R. Three units to the left and three units down will bring point K right there, and bring point L right there. So I might even name those K prime and L prime. So that translation maps triangle KML onto the little blue triangle. And now I need to go ahead and find that dilation. So if I dilate using R as a center, R will stay put, which is what I want. K will go twice as far away as it was from point R and will map onto point P. L will be twice as far away from R as it was in the original and will map onto point Q. 
So a dilation with a center of R and a scale factor of 2 following a translation of three units, negative 3 units in the x direction, negative 3 units in the y direction of triangle KML will produce or map to triangle PRQ. And again, I'm going to be careful about the name that, or the way that I name those vertices. I've got to make sure that K pairs up with P, L matches up with Q, and that M maps to point R. All right, again, up at the top of the next page, I want you to summarize the key ideas and important understandings. What are you going to need to remember from this video when you see a question on a quiz or a test that asks you to pull back some of this knowledge and skills? And then you can go ahead and see how much of this material you have in fact mastered by completing the questions on page 9.